Hey, what's up, guys? It's Arlen. I'm here with another, another video, and uh, we're checking out. Um, let me see here. Yeah, we're checking out. Let me see. The 15 most savage Master Roshi moments in Dragon Ball. Have you watched Dragon Ball before? No. Yeah. What kind of question is that? Have you? I I'm play asking. Dragon Ball Z video games. Really? I mean, I don't know. Everybody doesn't know Dragon Ball. <laughs> All right, here yeah. we go. Okay, he's a huge pervert, so behind his lecherous actions, Master Roshi is a highly experienced martial arts master who helped Goku become the warrior. Since the character has been around for so long, we decided to look at some of his most savage moments throughout the franchise in chronological order. So keep watching if you love that spooky old turtle comment. Starting us off, we have a scene that not only stands as one of Master Roshi's greatest moments of all time, but also stands as one of the franchise's most defining moments. We are, of course, talking about the very first Kamehameha of the Dragon Ball franchise, which was performed by none other than Master Roshi himself. Though this technique would eventually become Goku's signature move, it was developed by the old turtle hermit. Roshi first displayed the Kamehameha in the early days of Dragon Ball, in an attempt to help his old student, the Ox King, whose castle was on fire. Because he had discarded the Boncho fan, which could help put out the fire, Master Roshi instead opted to use his Kamehameha attack to put out the flame. Master Roshi then transformed into his max power form and proceeded to blast a Kamehameha wave at the Ox King's castle. Although the wave put out the flames, it also destroyed the castle in the process. Despite this, it was still a pretty badass moment for Roshi, who put a ton of power behind the attack, showing that he truly was a martial arts master underneath his elderly and perverted appearance. Work hard, study well, eat and sleep plenty. That's the Turtle Hermit way, <coughs> the way of Master Roshi, who trained Goku and Krillin and helped them become the warriors they are today. Both students trained under Master Roshi in the early days of Dragon Ball, and said training stands as some of the old master's greatest moments. The training that Goku and Krillin went through was definitely strange, but there's no doubt how effective it was, and they owe it all to Master Roshi. The martial arts master was sure to train his people's bodies and spirits, putting them through physical trials while wearing heavy turtle shells on their back. Roshi didn't skimp on the brain training either, ensuring that Goku actually got some form of education. Roshi's training was an example of just how skilled and brilliant of a martial artist he was, and it was a pretty savage move to use milk delivery and other labor as disguises for training. A classic martial arts master move. Just look at Mr. Miyagi. Although Goku and Krillin would eventually move beyond Master Roshi's training, he was still their first teacher, the person who pushed them to superhuman limits through his teaching. After strengthening the bodies and minds of his students, Master Roshi still had one thing to teach his students. Perseverance. How exactly did he do this? Let's take a look at one of Master Roshi's most baller moves in the history of the franchise. After his students had entered into the World Martial Arts Tournament, <coughs> Master Roshi himself entered under the guise of Jackie Chun. Master Roshi did this so he could take on his students and defeat them in the tournament. Why exactly? Because the most important lesson of the Turtle School was that there will always be someone stronger than you, and that you must continue to get stronger and better. Thus, Master Roshi took on both of his students as Jackie Chun. Roshi believed that if his students won their first Mikey. competition, they would be well, happy to water their sour. Best. Why? Is this old water or something? No, it's flavored water. <coughs> it's flavored water? Yeah. Power would never strive to get Don't stronger. Don't judge my water. Jackie Chun disguise to ensure that they couldn't be victorious right off the bat. This was a pretty clever way to teach his students when you think about it. And since they never found out about it, even in their second tournament, it proved to be rather effective. In the aforementioned World Martial Arts Tournament, Master Roshi proved that he still had what it takes to become a champion. While he was disguised as Jackie Chun, Master Roshi was able to take on Goku, defeating him at the end of the final round. A feat that was rather impressive at the time, and it becomes even more impressive when looking at how strong Goku is now. It was definitely a tough battle, but Master Roshi managed to hold his own against the super strong kid, proving that his experience and martial arts mastery were just a bit better in the end. The match was decided when both combatants were down and out, but Jackie Chun was the first to stand up after the smoke had cleared, earning him the victory, the prize money, and the title of Strongest Under the Heavens. Of course, as the series progressed, Roshi's power level paled in comparison to Goku, as the students eventually surpassed their master. Despite this, it was still pretty awesome to see how strong Master Roshi really was when compared to the likes of the toughest opponents in the world market.
martial arts tournament, including his own students. During his match against Goku, a strange thing occurred. Well, not strange for Goku, but strange nonetheless. As Goku and Master Roshi battled, the full moon <coughs> was in view, turning Goku into his great beast form. Since a giant ape monster is more of a problem than just his opponent being stronger, Master Roshi used some quick thinking to ensure the safety of the audience the World Martial Arts Tournament. And instead of just cutting off Goku's tail, Master Roshi destroyed the freaking moon. Can we just talk about how crazy that is for a minute? Master Roshi, a human, shocked the moon with a Kamehameha and destroyed it instantly. Talk about ridiculous power scaling. <laughs> Not only did this turn Goku back to normal, it also meant that he wouldn't turn back into a great ape again making the match even once more. We can't even begin to explain how cool this was. Master Roshi appeared to completely annihilate Goku with his Kamehameha, but in reality, he destroyed the moon, an even greater feat that saved everyone, and showed that he was one of the strongest humans on the planet. Piccolo might have done this in DBZ, but Roshi was the first moon destroyer of the franchise. After the tournament saga of Dragon Ball had ended, Goku went in search of the Dragon Ball running into the Red Ribbon Army along the way. The baddies in the Red Ribbon Army were quick to go after Goku and his friends, arriving at Master Roshi's home. But the hapless soldiers that were told to keep an eye on Roshi were no match for the old <coughs> master, since he took care of them in one of his most savage moments of all time. The soldiers Ooh. didn't know who they were messing with, as they attempted to hold off Master Roshi as he attacked every single one of them, freeing him and his friends from being hostages of the evil organization. The they were wrong for making that black dude look like that. <laughs> They were wrong for that. You saw how they made him look. Yeah. Just messed up. The Master Roshi got a bad Call me Venomous and Maid. Although in retrospect, it wasn't really a fair fight. Seeing him be quick to take care of every soldier on his island. Bruh. The coolest moment in this fight. Bruh, they messed up for that. They some. Doubt when he caught every bullet shot at him, showing just how powerful and badass the old master was. Master Roshi used his Jackie Chun disguise on two different occasions. The second time was the World Martial Arts Tournament that led to the King Piccolo Saga, a saga that resulted in Master Roshi's death. King Piccolo had once terrorized the world in the time of Master Roshi's teacher, Master Mutaito, who was forced to steal away the Demon King in a rice cooker using the Makuba, otherwise known as the evil containment wave, which ended up costing him his life. The Dragon Ball is pretty ridiculous, so. Master Roshi, as the Turtle Hermit attempted to use the evil containment wave to steal away King Piccolo after he'd been freed. But the containment wave ended up failing due to missing the rice cooker that he planned on stealing the villain. <laughs> the attack also drained Master Roshi's life force, causing him to die in the same way that his master had. It's All crazy. Right, You're probably thinking, action. what the fuck, a rice cooker? You gotta contain an evil monster in a rice cooker? I mean, some of the things just make you question why, but it's like they just—you just gotta go. It's like they taking stereotypes and making fun of it. Actually, like they just—it's hilarious. After the entire franchise, and thus by extension, one of the most savage moments in all of Dragon Ball. After the King Piccolo saga of Dragon Ball, Master Roshi began to take something of a tacit role in the franchise. But that all changed when Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F and the Dragon Ball Super Saga that adapted its story came around. After sitting on the sidelines for so long, Master Roshi was back in action. But he, Gohan, and the other Dragon Ball heroes were only there to hold off Frieza and his army until Goku arrived. He still did an amazing job of fighting back proving that he still had what it took to face evil villains and come out on top. Although Roshi didn't face Frieza himself, he did use his max power form to take care of a number of his weak underlings with a massive Kamehameha blast. Master Roshi's part in this fight was rather small in retrospect, but that doesn't mean it was any less savage. He took on a huge number of bad guys that gave even Gohan and Krillin trouble. Suffice it to say, Master Roshi had his loss of step in his old age, and by the time of Dragon Ball Super, it appeared as though he was still in fighting shape. We mentioned before that Master Roshi That's lit, ain't it? Mm -hmm. and if he had Even though he's an old man, he still got it! Just, be just because Master Roshi's old don't mean he still don't got it, bro. Oh, wow. Here oh, he wow. Go. You paused it right at the perfect time. <laughs> <laughs> he started bleeding through his nose, bro. Yeah, that's that's a strength. But when it came time for the tournament of power, Master Roshi made sure that he wouldn't have any weaknesses in the battle. 
Maybe this was because Roshi finally saw the error of his way. But most likely he just needs to get serious for a battle that would decide the fate of his universe. So, in order to ensure that he wouldn't fall victim to production and thus be able to more effectively help Universe 7 survive until the end of the tournament of power, Master Roshi overcame his perverted ways through some serious training. He did so with the help of Quark, who used shape-shifting to help him become immune to feminine charms, essentially ridding him of his major character flaw. Roshi revealed the extent of his training during the tournament of power, when he stated he'd be fine against Universe 6 and his female Saiyan, and later, when he resisted the subduction of Universe 4's Kawe, who he easily defeated. The tournament of power was the first time we got to see Master Roshi show off his power in a long time, aside from his actions during Freeza's return, and his fights throughout are some of the best in the franchise. The old hermit was chosen to be part of the team both because he's still relatively powerful and because he has decades of experience to help with their fighting strategy. Another reason that Master Roshi was chosen to fight on Team Universe 7 was because he has a long list of tricks and tactics that could come in handy in the tournament. One of Roshi's earliest moments in the tournament of power was against a fighter from Universe 10 whose wings and fire breath made him a tough opponent to defeat. But through the power of teamwork, Universe 7 was able to eliminate him from the tournament. The character's defeat began when his fire breath was deflected back at him by Gohan. He was then struck by Krillin, who threw a destructive disc that injured his wing. Finally, Master Roshi went in for the final blow by using a max power Kanehameha that knocked him out of the ring. After working together with his team to defeat the Flying Menace, Master Roshi ventured off on his own in the Tournament of Power, leading him to eliminate three different members of Universe 4. The first opponent from Universe 4 that Master Roshi faced on his way was Kawe, a beautiful warrior who attempted to seduce Roshi to lower his guard. However, as we all know, Roshi had trained to overcome his perverted ways. So, her attempts were unsuccessful, and he quickly chased her off the edge of the battlefield, eliminating her from the tournament. Next up, Master Roshi faced Dracor, <coughs> who attempted to trap him in an illusion. Fortunately, Roshi was able to break the illusions and use the evil containment wave on Dracor, stealing her in a jar that he then tossed over the side of the arena. <laughs> this almost got Roshi disqualified, but the two Zenos allowed the technique because they thought it was cool. Finally, <laughs> Roshi faced off against Gano who proved to be a much tougher opponent after he transformed and increased his power. But Master Roshi came out on top in the end, eliminating what? three this different This man just did this. This man like Shaggy. Now Max Savage. Basically. Master Roshi's fight against Skanos almost cost him You think he's not fight, strong at all, but, but dang. Four warriors, the old master planned to go out with he a got some good fight. Many moments that we had to include separately as one of the character's most savage scenes. After Ganos transformed into his stronger and more imposing form, his power increased quite a bit. Master Roshi was able to hold off Ganos for a time, but once again, he increased his power. This drove Roshi to use a max power Kamehameha, and we do mean max power, since the old hermit planned to use all the energy left in his body to perform the attack. Knowing that the attack might kill him, Roshi gave one last goodbye to his students reminding them of the Turtle School motto before unleashing the attack. The Kamehameha ended up working, and Ganos was knocked out of the ring, but Roshi expended all of his power, leading him to collapse soon after. On the verge of death, Goku, who was devastated at the thought of losing his first teacher, saved Roshi by giving him some energy, but the Turtle Hermit still needed some time to recover before he could get back in action. After having some time to rest and recover from his max power Kamehameha, Master Roshi was back in the game, and his first opponent was none other than Frieza's Universe 6 counterpart, Frost. Frost snuck up on the old master as he was lamenting his old age, and how it took much longer to recover, leading to a brawl that showed how capable Roshi was in a fight. Even if Frost wasn't nearly as strong as Frieza, it was still incredibly impressive that Master Roshi was able to hold off the villain as long as he did. At first, Frost overpowered Master Roshi, stepping on him to assert his power and dominance. I did not like Roshi was able to break free and power up to his max power form once more. In this form, Master Roshi was able to get a few hits in on Frost, who was surprised Hell to yeah. his power. But Roshi didn't do enough damage, and after taking a few punches, uh. Frost began to dodge all of Roshi's attacks eventually slamming him across the arena with a mighty tail attack. All hope was not lost, though, as Master Roshi still had one technique he could still use. In order to eliminate an opponent as powerful as Frost from the Tournament of Power, Master Roshi had to once again rely on his tricks rather than his power, since he was clearly outmatched in the category. So, Master Roshi decided to once again break out the Makuba. After getting knocked around by Frost, Master Roshi used the Chaos to set up a trap for his opponent. 
placing up a jar in front of him. When the dust settled, Master Roshi, with a determined and badass expression on his face, executed the Makuba, sucking the unsuspecting frost into the jar in one of the character's most baller moves. Unfortunately, as cool as this trap was, and as awesome as Master Roshi was in executing it, the evil containment wave ended up failing. Just like with his attempt to steal King Piccolo, Master Roshi missed the vessel he planned to steal his target in, forcing him to try a third time later on. And despite the technique failing to trap Frost, Master Roshi still deserved a ton of credit for this attempt, since he looked awesome doing it, and he survived using the previously deadly attack three times in the same day. The final awesome Master Roshi moment on our list is perhaps the most subtle, but it's savage all the same. <coughs> From the last few entries of this video, it's easy to see that Master Roshi was a huge asset in the Tournament of Power. And even though his final Makuba ended up backfiring, Master Roshi still deserves a lot of praise for his work in the tournament, which is exactly what he got. After helping Vegeta break out of the Makuba that Frost had redirected, the old Master had exhausted all of his energy once more. Because of this, Vegeta told him to let go of his ego and eliminate himself from the tournament, as he had done enough and couldn't be of more use in his current state. Although he didn't blatantly say it, Vegeta's words were a form of respect for Roshi. Beerus, however, gave Roshi a much more direct form of respect, both when he told him he'd done well and when he stopped calling him old man, opting to call him by his respective title of master. It was a pretty oh, great moment for Roshi, really. as he proved he was still relevant in a world of gods and ultimate universe tournament. So, Why wouldn't they not give him respect anyways? Because, like, moment. he has we trained them. Meetings? Yeah, he trained like, them. they're... Yeah. Everyone they know, like, really frustrated seems like they would... They would be so disrespectful sometimes. Yeah. But it was pretty good just to see that, like, Master Roshi really is, like... He really is an OG yeah. of the Dragon Ball universe. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. It was dope. Tell me down below, what are your favorite Master Roshi moments? And peace.